Good morning, everybody. Yesterday, in my daily readings, I got up to Joshua chapter 7. It's the story of Achan's sin. Simply put, Achan directly disobeyed a command the Lord had given. The result was weakness and defeat in Israel. Some Israelite soldiers died in the battle against Ai, and the people of Israel were shocked that such a thing could happen to them. They were, after all, the people of the living God. Even Joshua lost his way and said some very foolish things as he prayed. The Lord pronounced judgment on Achan, and so we read towards the end of the chapter in verse 24. Then Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, the silver, the garment, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So Israel stoned him with stones. They burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. So as we read this, perhaps we're deeply shocked and perhaps we ask ourselves, why would Joshua do such a terrible thing? Didn't he know that God is the God of love? The answer is that God himself had commanded it in verse 15. It shall be that the one who is chosen with the things under the ban shall be killed and his body burned with fire. He and all that belongs to him because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he has done a disgraceful and dis disobedient thing in Israel. Again, in verse 26, it tells us that after the stoning of Achan, so the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Perhaps now we're even more deeply shocked. Could really have command, God really have commanded such a thing? <clears throat> My mind turned to another stoning that didn't happen. In John 8, some scribes and Pharisees present Jesus with a woman who was taken in adultery in the very act. The Pharisees told Jesus that in the law, Moses had commanded that such a woman should be stoned then added, what do you say? <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus didn't condemn the woman, so she wasn't stoned. So what's going on here? After all, I would have thought if we put Achan's sin and the woman's sin side by side, the woman's sin was greater than the sin of Achan. What are we seeing here? Had God changed and become a nicer, more loving God by the time we get to the New Testament? Has God in Jesus decided that sin was not so bad after all? I believe that the answer to both these questions must be no. God is unchanging. He is the eternal God. And the Bible speaks of Jesus Christ, who is God, being the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is not fickle. He never changes. He is dependable, always the same. He is the rock. This is one of the reasons we can trust in him and depend on him. We will always find him the same. God has not changed one little bit. And God is love. He was love when he commanded that Achan should be killed and then burned. I suspect that if we'd been able to see into his heart and mind at the time, we would have seen great sorrow that he had to command such a thing. But he knew he had to do it. The story reveals God's hatred of sin, even what we might consider a relatively small sin. But all sin is sin, and all sin incurs the wrath of God, and all sin will be punished. That is the clear teaching of the whole Bible. Why then was the woman not stoned? Is it the case that by the New Testament times, God's view of sin had changed? Again, we've already said the answer is no. Why wasn't she stoned then? After all, the law of Moses, God's law had said that she should be. The answer was standing in front of her, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he is the propitiation for our sins. He is the one who turns away the wrath of God from us. He was punished for our sins. He suffered and died for our sins. He died in our place. <clears throat> Excuse me. God will punish all sin. But Christ received the punishment for my sin. He loved me and gave himself for me. He died a horrible death for me, for you, for the whole world. So, in the first story, we are taught sobering lessons about God's hatred of sin. His wrath and judgment against sin. We are taught about the gravity of sin. In the second story, we are not being taught that sin is any less sinful, but the one has come who will dispense mercy to us sinners if we will receive it. We are being taught that there is grace for sinners. Gravity, grace. Amen. Have a lovely day.